Welcome to the Wine Review, everyone. I am Ryan, the Wine Guy, bringing you to night a California red blend, Hook or Crook from Napa Valley, 2013. Interesting label that they have. It may run around 20. You may be able to get it for a little bit less. Um, as low as maybe 16. Um, or you could uh, get connections and maybe even get it cheaper. You know, just uh, saying. Um, it doesn't say on the back what the blend is, but I did look it up online. And it's um, overall equally balanced between Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, and Petite Syrah. 13% alcohol by volume, and it is out of the Lodi part of California. As we sat around the barrels in the cellar, trying to figure out how we could source and produce an outstanding effect affordable quality driven red wine one of our crew exclaimed that by hook or by crook we will make it happen a brand was born I don't really know what that means I should have looked that up hook or crook I'm sure you can look it up easily um, I looked it up originally and it came up with a bunch of weird stuff um, and not the wine. I specifically had to say I want the wine, but whatever. Going to the wine, not a really good uh, indicator here. Uh, it, it is definitely a little bit dark, although you can definitely see through it, so it's not totally opaque, but it definitely has some um, dark red going on there. Ah, uh, and not a whole lot of legs going on. I mean, if you were really into that, I don't usually care much. I don't really base my wine off the legs, really. I just do the uh, what it looks like, smells like, and tastes like. So I mean, o overall, it just it seems like a typical red blend, a little bit lighter than some, but uh, on the nose, hmm. definitely get a little bit of cedar on there. The vanilla, another oak, uh, uh, spicy oak as well. So there's definitely a little bit of smoke on there. The pepper, cassis. That's, that's all you, that you're getting from the cab. Um, the vanilla could also be from the cab. It could also be from the merlot. Getting some blackberry again from the cab. It's a plum. A little bit of mocha. That, that, that's all from uh, probably the Merlot as well. And uh, Petit Sirac could also play into that smoky. Uh, and, this, uh, and spiciness on it as well. Um, all right, let's see what it's doing on the palate. Let's do one more.
Wow. Even though it's only 13.5% alcohol, the taste going down really makes it seem like it could be more. It's a slight burning sensation going down. It's not overly powerful since it is a little bit tame on the alcohol, but there is a little bit of heat on this going down. Do get a little burn. Uh, you do get a sort of like cedar uh, or maple taste to it, so there is like a little bit of sweetness on this. Not too sweet though, but you definitely get that like a sweet cedarness on there. Um, wow, you know, it's like straight up, you know, black pepper going down. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, vanilla, so a huge oak bomb, really just like smoky. Uh, sensation in your mouth, um, a little bit of plum for sure, um, a f vanilla, uh, I think I mentioned that, and then just kind of like a coating of chocolate in the very back, kind of just finishing it off. So um, originally when I looked at the wine, I was thinking it's Definitely looks a lot lighter than most red wines. So I was thinking it either has to be Merlot or Pinot Noir. Now sometimes Merlot can look really dark and sometimes it can be a little bit light. But um, I think the, the Merlot in this really tend to sort of tame everything in the end. Um, because you do have Cabernet Sauvignon and Petit Syrah in here. Petit Syrah can tend to be really big on the spiciness. So um, the Merlot definitely does tame this out at the very end. A good lingering finish. Um, a little burning lingering finish though. I am sort of really getting those spices in my mouth at the, this very end. But still everything's wrapping around. A um, little bit of fruit dancing on the tongue. And that good uh, vanilla and chocolate oak. Um, where to buy this? Um, as I mentioned, it, I think it, it's around 20 uh, Maybe a little bit less depending on where you get it. Um, I didn't see this at the old place I worked at. I've only seen it at my new place that I work at. So I would say if you have a liquor store near you that tends to like to not only have a good mainstream collection, you know, like your Bogles or your Josh's or your Cupcakes, um, but they also tend to like to have a variety of unheard of wines I would say look there if it's just like a, a local place that just pretty much has your everyday stuff they may not have it I mean they may but um, I would definitely look for stores that specifically like to sell wines that aren't something that you can go into break down the street and get um, and here's what it looks like one more time Hooker Crook uh, Napa Valley Red Blend they have a Pinot Noir they have a Shard uh, they may have one or two others so be sure you're picking up the right one and the right vintage if, if they have the same vintage that I'm drinking if, if not then whatever um, will there be a difference? Maybe, maybe not. It really all depends. Sometimes I don't notice a difference. Sometimes I do. Um, California, 2012, 2013. Uh, roughly around the same. Um, I know 16 may be a little, may be a little different for them, but, you know, we'll see. Um, so, Final rating on this. Is this, you have to look at it, is this something I would age? And I would say maybe not so much. 
It's already 2017. This is 2013. You might be able to get lucky with another couple years. So I, I would say maybe not so much. Um, me personally, I think this is a four and a half out of five. It's good. It's great. But what it's missing is I think I think it's just a little too much heat on there even though it's low alcohol I feel like there's a lot of burning sensation going on which I don't mind I do like wines that burn um, but you know I, I prefer my Syrahs and Zins to be burning my red blends I do like a little bit of burn but I do like there to be a little bit more going on and I feel like the burning kind of wants to get back but then the Merlot at the same time wants to tame it. So e e even the, even as I've been speaking, I'm like, oh, the Merlot's taming it. But I do notice that that little petite Syrah in there is really trying to be like, no, I know. You know, like like kind of like uh, you got the cab that's like the father, the Merlot that's like the mother, and the petite Syrah that's like the little child, and uh. You know, the mother's trying to, like, say, you know, the father's, like, say, oh, you know, ask your mother. The mother's, like, saying, no, you're not doing it. And the little kid's, like, well, I'm going to do it, so whatever. And so I, I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like that, that, that that's what's going on. The Merlot's trying to tame down the spiciness, but then the spiciness is trying to, like, say, I'm doing it anyway. So I feel like that's what's preventing this from getting a five. It's like as soon as I'm like, oh wow, the burning is gone, it's right back again. And even even that, even as I'm still speaking, it still can't decide what it wants to do. So it's definitely a good, good long lingering finish. But be forewarned, you may be in that spot where you're like, wow, this can't make up his mind what it's doing. And I like my wine to sort of towards the end be like, you're done with this, and this is what it's going to do now instead of no it's not done and we're still going that rocky boat going through all the sirens and we got to plug our ears and all that yes that was an uh, Homer Odyssey reference I just made right there so good job uh, anyway I am finished this review and I will see you all next time cheers <laughs>